Sarah's Weeknight Meals is made possible by Sunsweet and... Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was starting when I was a child with my grandmother doing fresh pasta, and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Sarah's Weeknight Meals. Key West, Florida, the Conk Republic, is a magical little island that plays by its own rules. And its culinary king is Norman Van Aken, a Florida food legend who's my cooking partner today. We're making a version of my Bahamian conch chowder. We're going to use some local fish because conch's not going to be available There's everywhere. no conch in Kansas. No conch. On Ask Sarah, so hi, Ronnie. a viewer from Houston has a question. How to choose the right avocado and how to know when it's right? and how to cut it the right way. Here's how I'm gonna do it. Good to know because back in Key West, we're making this mysteriously named salad called kata. What did you bring us? Oh, Somebody bring that? avocado, and avocado. avocado. Somebody bring mango, somebody bring papaya, and they would contribute and I'll make up the version of whatever kata was that night. I love it. I wanna propose a toast to the whole A culinary salute to, to the Conk Republic. Drink up. <laughs> Today on Sarah's Weeknight Meals. In 1971, Norman Van Aken came to Key West to cook, and he didn't want to leave. The thing about Key West is that most of us knew we were in love with the place. It wasn't just a place to live and work. It was our personal and collective Shangri-La. Long before Jimmy Buffett wrote Margaritaville, we had already pledged allegiance to the magical little scrap of land at the end of the rainbow. We just felt lucky when we walked the old small streets and alleys protected by some ancient maternal force. Something deep in our souls told us this was a place where we could find peace and quiet and camaraderie of like-minded people. On top of that, the city was stamped with a rafish charm, a Joe de vive. You could remake yourself in Key West, and no one minded, as long as you helped keep the good times rolling. We lived day to day, but were intent to do it in quality drinking establishments and places to enjoy the crazy matrix of foods not eaten in most of America, save New Orleans. In years to come, Norman Van Aken fused the flavors of Key West into something he called New World Cuisine. One of the Beard Foundation's who's who, and a culinary force in Florida, he returned to his roots to cook with me at a beautiful Key West home. I feel like we're in the middle of paradise here. We are. Yeah. yeah, and we're cooking, and it's outside. What are we making today? We're making a version of my Bahamian conch chowder. Actually, I shouldn't say mine, because when I first got to Key West in the 70s, other people were making for probably a century. Mm -hmm. But we're going to use some local fish, fish that people could now make this chowder anywhere, because conch's not going to be available There's everywhere. There's no conch in Kansas. No conch in no, Kansas. No, no, no. None from Illinois, where I'm from originally. <laughs> okay. But there, there's beautiful snapper and grouper and all kinds of other fish that will work beautifully in this soup. The word conch is an interesting word because if you read it on a printed page, you'd think it'd be pronounced conch. conch, conch. So be in the know and okay. pronounce it conch. Okay, and I just wanted to say for those of you who are like, what is that? You know that big shell that you listen to, the one that you want to hear the ocean in, that big gorgeous shell? That's conch. What's inside is the yummy stuff that you would put into the chowder. Mm -hmm. Okay. Conch is so very important, Key West. Actually, the people who are born here are known as conchs. Okay. We make conch fritters, we make conch salad, and we make conch chowder. Yum. So what do we got going already? I've cooked two ounces of slab bacon with a quarter cup of olive oil. And then I've got some scotch bonnet chilies, which are in this dish here so they can stay hot away from my skin. And then some garlic would go great in here right now, Sarah, if you can reach that. A tablespoon. Here comes the garlic. You notice how we sliced the garlic? I didn't mince it up because yeah, I want Yeah, I was the... wondering about that. Well, I like the flavor to be more delicate. The more you chop up garlic, as the you know. The more you get out of it. Right. Yeah. So I like the more Nuanced. gentle way. Yeah. yeah, exactly. One sweet onion. Could you now add that to the pot? I've got some celery, okay. bell peppers. Red bell peppers could be used as opposed to yellow. Yeah, just go ahead and put that in okay. there, Sarah, and I'll, I'll stir as we need. Okay, but I do want you to tell me about scotch bonnets. Scotch bonnets uh, are interchangeable with habanero chilies. 
so much more heat than, uh, say, a jalapeno chili, but they have the Caribbean flavor. I love to use them. Sarah, can you add that yellow pepper that you diced before? And I'm cutting up these carrots. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the four celery stalks that I've diced, and then you add in your uh, chopped up carrot. And I'm gonna cut up some fennel. About half of a nice sized bulb is good. Okay. We're gonna coat the vegetables with the bacon and olive oil fats because that's gonna get that great flavor deeply imbued within the vegetables. So here's our fennel, which adds a nice licorice sort of note to the Now that's collection interesting. Of is that really traditional in this chowder or is that something you're adding? You know, talk to the local conch people, the people of Key West, and you're gonna get different versions of recipes all down the line. Well the reason I asked is because fennel is rather Italian. There's a lot there's a Italian history here. Actually, when I first moved here, I'd see menus that would say calves liver Italian style. And I'm just like, really? Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> Key West is a polyglot place. I mean, you have all kinds of people from all over because we're an island and there's been so much trading that right. has gone on through here. The Navy had a major presence here for a long, long time. So you can you can do lots of different things, please. Asian influences are also true here because of the uh, Asians that came to work the railroads in uh, Cuba eventually migrated here as well, Sarah. Let's put a little salt and pepper in here, too. Okie dokie. I always like to season, season as Season as go. you go. If you wait till the end, you end up adding way more than you need. Yep. And it doesn't penetrate or flavor it the way it should. Right. And I will say cook with my hearing. You know, I, the sound of this, I decided to yank up the heat a little bit. Oops. Because okay, I want to hear that sizzling continuing to go on. Okay. I'm trying to figure out if I... Oh, there. Mm. Okay. About a tablespoon of the crushed red pepper. Yeah, so we're just gonna sprinkle that over there like that. And like any time you're using chilies, you can decide whether or not you want something hotter or not hot. I am a hot loving Me honey. too. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna let this cook to five to seven as we say. So let's take a look at that fish we got. All right, I'm gonna bring you up. The fish that is not conch. <laughs> That's local snapper. Boy, is that gorgeous. Clear eye and a nice smooth yeah. scale. Yeah. Well, that's one of the benefits about being in Key West is that you have extraordinary bounty of seafood all around us. So we're, we're spoiled and we admit it. This is a unique um, uh, version, a variety that's better for snapper. This is called a ham bone snapper. Oh! You know, I don't know where the names always come from, but I love the colorful nature of that name. American red snapper is another uh, fish to use, but the most important thing is freshness. And so use something local or as fresh as you can get. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So here we go, just cutting it into not too tiny pieces because they'll begin to become smaller as we, we saute them yeah. and also as they cook in the soup. Mm -hmm. And if you could just add a little salt and pepper to the fish, that would be great. Are we going to add it to the pot now or are we going to do some later? We're going to give it a little start in a saute pan and get the flavors moving that way. And also that will improve the texture. If you drop the fish in here raw, it will cook, but texturally it's just better to do it with a little serum That first. is a great tip. You know, I'm partially from New England, even though I grew up in New York City, mm -hmm. and we always just throw the fish right in the pan. Mm, yeah. But I never thought of browning it first. That's brilliant. Okay, so a little salt and pepper on there. Okay. And then this is happy now. Mm-hmm. And we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and put in the fish stock. About two quarts, which we made from the bones of the fish that we filleted. Now, what if you don't want to go to the trouble of making fish stock? What could you use in its place? You could either use clam, the bottle clam juice in the store mm -hmm. or chicken stock. All right, so we have some beautiful fish stock. See how nice and clear yes, that is? Yes. This is going to add a ton of flavor. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to take a couple bay leaves and you just crack them mm -hmm. so they release their aromatics. Mm -hmm. And then I like to start off with the whole tomato, Sarah, so that I can put them in here. And then before I add in the tomato puree, I can just take the spoon and give them a little break up. Okay, and then the rest of this. So I think that was a 28 ounce can of whole tomatoes right. and a 15 ounce can of sauce. Right, now we're gonna bring that back up to a simmer. So. Well, before we move over, let's go ahead and put some herbs in here. Okay, what are you so how much time do we need? About a tablespoon of thyme, and then some sweet basil is always good too. And how much basil? About two tablespoons of that as well. So some sweet basil. Okay, so that's gonna get to know each other. We're gonna let that simmer together once your thyme is in there. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get the, the uh, skillet to saute the um, fish, the brown local, the fish, the yes. snapper in okay. this case, our, okay. our ham bone snapper. I love that ham bone, that's so counterintuitive. Oh, there's no ham in it. Okay. <laughs> 
Oh, right. I, well, you know, you, the, the fishermen come up with different names. And, uh -huh. Okay. All right, so we're just going to continue to simmer that. Now we've got a, a skillet here. Got to get it hot. We're going to get it hot because if you don't get it hot, the fish grabs the skillet, right? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and taste the olive oil, and you can see that it's already starting to add some smoke, so we're yeah. going to lift it off the, the heat, which you could always do when you're cooking. Right. A lot of people at home, you can go ahead and help me. Yep, I wish. You lift the pan off the heat. And, and the it, heat goes bye-bye. It slows things down, mm. and you can hear it. And so what we're going to do is just make sure we don't crowd it too got much. It. Perfect. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. And so I we're got back it. on the heat. I can see that I'm, it, it's needing a little bit more oil. There. Now this is interesting. This is something I would have used a non-stick pan for because fish tends to stick. If you have a non-stick pan, by all means, use it. Well, it looks like you're doing fine because you heated the pan so well, too. I'm not going to cook this all the way through. I'm just getting that nice little color on there. It's going to make the texture in the soup a whole lot better. I'm going to flip it over. Now we're going to go into the, to the plate here. I just want to point out, you want to hold up the spatula? Sure. This is the right tool for the job. Mm -hmm. It's called a, well, Peltic or fish spatula because it's flexible, so you can get under the fish without breaking it. These are great, and they're inexpensive. I use, I use them for everything. Yeah. Okay, so. That's so interesting. Next time I make my New England fish chowder, I'm going to do that. You're going to get every little bit of the fish bits off the right, bottom of this thing right. too because they're loaded with flavor. Do we add the fish to the soup now? Not quite. We're going to start with the potatoes, so let me go grab the soup. Okay. Okay. And I'll, I'll just park the fish over here. Yeah, come on over here. Oh my gosh, the smell of the stock working on top of this, the tomatoes. I am excited. Now these are um, little baby red potatoes mm -hmm. that have been pre-cooked. When you cook them ahead of time, they can drink in the soup. They absorb more. They absorb better. So do you cook them completely or just till they're just barely done? Just barely done is okay. fine, yeah. But if you wanted to, you could add them raw. You could, yeah. Okay. Just a little more time in the soup when that Got happens. It. So okay. Um, we're going to add probably about half of these, let me see, before mm -hmm. I add the whole amount. Mm -hmm. we'll you stand can, back. And if you have, <clears throat> you know, you have more than you need, well, make a hash browns the next day. I like the way you think. American fries, yes, right? Yes, yum, yum. Does that okay. good look good? Oh, that looks good. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we can go ahead and uh, let these guys get to know each other. We'll wait on the fish, and uh, maybe we could begin. The you're, dressing. You're reading my mind. Yes. All right. So we're going to make this mysteriously named salad called Cut Up. Really? Yeah. I had no idea, Sarah. As long as I've lived here, I've never heard of this until about two years ago. I was invited to a dinner party with Janet, and we went to the home of people who were born and raised in Key West. Somebody bring avocado, somebody bring mango, somebody bring papaya, somebody bring tomato, and they would contribute and all make up the version of whatever cut up was that night. I love it. I do too. Jeez. So make a simple vinaigrette, right? Okay, so a teaspoon of sugar? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that was solve the sugar. And the salt. Yeah, and the salt in the vinegar. Right. Right. And uh, how much? A pinch is good, yeah. yeah. So now the vinegar will kind of help dissolve it. Because it, it dissolves so much better. Yeah. It, it doesn't dissolve where, well in oil. I'm going to just uh, eyeball. We want a quarter of a cup. I mean, let's yeah. see. And so this is sherry wine vinegar. Which I love it. Sherry vinegar, like balsamic vinegar, has that inherent sweetness. And well, and also it's high in acidity, which I like. And it's robust. I just love the flavor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's my favorite. Let's see if that looks like it's dissolved. Can you tell? Mm hmm Okay, yeah. So now we're going to add the three tablespoons of hazelnut. Hazelnut, and then we'll finish with the canola. Okay. Five. But this is just going to add a nice gentle coating to the mixture right. of fruits. Yeah, and and uh, it's interesting, I want to note that we only used a little bit of the nut oil because nut oils can take over, so you always mm. cut them mm -hmm. with a neutral oil, and we're using canola. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a half a cup of canola. Okay. There we go. Grapeseed oil is another one that you could I use. I love grapeseed oil. That's yeah. actually my favorite because mm -hmm. it's so neutral. It's mm -hmm. funny. When I went to cooking school, I would go back to when I went to cooking school. I would never, I thought, something with no flavor? Why would you ever add that? But oil isn't just in there for its flavor. It's in there for a whole bunch of reasons. Can I add just a touch of sugar? Yeah, go, of course. Yeah. Hey, this is your recipe. Right. You're in charge. I, I love cooking with you. Well, yeah, I just... love not being the person in charge. <laughs> I mean, not that I'm usually these days, but. Oh, that's our vinaigrette. Okay, so now we're just waiting for your guests. We have to wait for them because they are going to be the people who bring us the 
Ingredients for the cut up. Oh, I got it. We'll okay. be in mystery space for a little while. The fish, we wait till the very end. Pretty much, yes. This is looking good, Sarah. So while it's uh, getting happier, let's go have a glass of wine. Oh, yes, let's. Let's do that. Yes. While we wait for our guests to arrive with their backyard fruit, here's a tip for cutting avocados you're gonna love. I get all sorts of questions on my website from viewers, and I love them because they're oftentimes things that I don't know or I research. I have a really good one for you today. It's from Ronnie, who's just moved to Houston, Texas, and it's about, very appropriately, avocados. So hi, Ronnie. How do you like Houston? Hi, Sarah. Houston's great. I haven't had a bad meal since I've been here, so that's probably my favorite part so far. Oh, better food in Texas than the Northeast, huh? What do you like about the Texas food? Well, it's just fresh. I'm a big fan of barbecue, but there's also a really good Mexican food scene here, and um, that kind of leads me to my question about avocados. All right, so shoot, what's your question? My question today is how to cut it the right way. I feel like I'm wasting so much good avocado. All right, this is one I can really do easily. How to cut it. We were all taught to take the avocado, you know, we all watch it on TV, all those cool chefs, they take a big knife, right? And they go around and they cut the avocado in half, right? Boink. And then they take the big knife and they take the heel of the knife and they hit it into the pit. Well, I worked with the California Avocado Commission and they said, please, you don't know how many people go to the emergency room, especially because of that last wonk. Please do it differently. So here's how I'm gonna do it. All right, so you put, first of all, don't ever hold something up in the air and a knife up in the air at the same time. Put it flat on the counter, take your knife, put your fingers on top and go all the way around, just like you would if you were up in the air. Okay, so we've gone around half. Now, turn it a quarter turn and do the same thing all over again. Go all the way around. Notice my hand is above. Everything's above. Oh, I'm not going to be able to do the reveal I want because it's already falling apart. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? You see how that pit just came right out? I wasn't even close. <laughs> OK, so what you can do now, you see, this is a firm avocado. So I could probably just peel this off. That's one way to peel it. Another thing, if it's a little um, riper and you don't think you're gonna be able to just peel off the skin like that, you can take your spoon and just put it underneath, get it between the shell and the avocado, and just scoop it out. And then you can slice it or do whatever you wanna do with it. So you see, it's, it's really very simple to get the avocado out. And there you go. Thanks so much, Sarah, that's a great tip. I have a very special question about tomatoes. And it's from Carly in Dallas, Texas, huh? Yep, down here in the Big D. I was just calling in because, you know, I love putting cherry tomatoes on my salad and pasta, but there's so many of them and they're so small and it just takes so long it, to cut them. It's, it's tedious. Such a hassle. Tedious, right? So, okay, I have a cool exactly. trick. Cool trick to show you. I have to put on my glasses because this calls for precision. All right. So first you take two, you could use two plates. We're using the lids from just, you know, take out, you know, you save those and recycle them and they're, they're very cool and they're somewhat flexible. So let me get these guys out of the way. All right, then what you do is you get your victims, your cherry tomatoes, and they could be ovals, they could be any size, and you put them on, okay, there's the rim side and the flat side. You put them on the flat side. Okay. And you fill the whole thing up. I just love this because really it can just so, so slow you down to cut them in half, but you want to often, especially like I like to salt my tomatoes before I put them in a salad because it brings out their flavor. Okay, so you see the very difficult thing I already did. They're all, yes. okay, they're all ready to go. Move that over there. Okay, then you put the flat side of the other lid on top. I'm gonna move it a little closer to me so I can get right down at eye level. All right, you take a serrated knife and you get right down to the level of the tomatoes so you can see where you are going. Okay, if you didn't get down there, you wouldn't slice them so evenly. And then, ta-da! You see this? Oh my gosh. Isn't that fantastic? That's so much easier. This is the sort of stuff That's that so keeps, me, keeps me up at night, you know? So I see more cherry tomatoes in your future. What do you think? 
Yeah. <laughs> definitely. Okay. I'm definitely more likely to use them since it won't take me hours to cut them. I know, really. Fun, huh? Thank you for that cool question. I love those kind of questions. <laughs> if you all want to send me a question from my website, just go to sarahmolten.com and maybe we'll put you on Ask Sarah. So you've been here for a million years. Oh, yes. I came here as a child, basically. I'm 21 years old. And your son lives here now, too? He does. My son, daughter-in-law, and our granddaughter, Audrey. Wow. I love this weather. Wind coming in from the ocean. Mm -hmm. Love it. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Look at it. Here's Maria and hey, Rob. Guys. Oh, man, got your little gift. Oh, OK. Yeah. Thank you, hey, Rob. Oh, good. How are you? Good Thank you for okay. oh, our cut-up salad. Do with that than we oh, oh, my wow. gosh. So fantastic. Yeah. Ourselves. I yes. can't wait to share this oh, history of this there. salad. Hey. Oh, wow. Here Hi, comes girl. the other cut up. That's yeah, great. that looks like the littlest cut up. What did you bring us? Oh, what is that? An avocado. An avocado. Thank you. Nice. Go grab your seats, and we're going to, Sarah and I are going to make some salad for you all. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Sarah, look what they brought us for the cut up salad. Oh, wow, that is one huge papaya. That's the Jamaican uh, papaya, and these are the local Florida avocados. Right. For cut up, everybody brings something from their backyard. I brought the mango. Oh. Not actually from my backyard, but from a close by backyard. <laughs> you pilfer, are you? <laughs> now. You're taking off the top and the bottom. Yeah, I do it this way. I've seen other people do it other ways, but there, then. The pit goes down the middle. It's yeah, so it's the oblong kind of way. And so I cut that there, and then there's gonna, I have to make room for the pit. Yeah. So this part actually, I can use the fruit that's over there, but then what you do is you take the knife and you, without going completely through the skin, you, you score it. You score it, well, deep, deeply, like this. Go all the way down. All the way but down, not like that. through the skin. And then um, this way as well. And you'll end up with. A cubed mango already. So watch this. Yeah, try and make sure that you're not going to have the skin go into it. And you see like that? That is beautiful. That was a magic trick. A I trick. like that magic trick. Let me get you a bowl to put okay. this in. And meanwhile, I'll cut the other one up, OK? Mm -hmm. So this is the last little bit that we're going to get those yeah. nice cubes out of. Skin's there, but you know, there's still a little bit left on here, and I on hate to, oh, on the pit, but right there, that's some beautiful fruit. Don't waste it. You know, I ask myself sometimes, what would Julia Child right, do? Right, right. She'd enjoy this, right? She, you know her. Alone in the kitchen. Remember, she famously said, remember, you're alone in the kitchen. Save the liver. Yes. <laughs> we know all, we know all the things. And then we have the local Florida avocados here. As I recall, these are lower in fat, a little more watery, not quite as concentrated in flavor, but they're delicious. Delicious. Yeah. I love them. And local. And local. Okay. These are Jamaican papaya, so they're the big boys. Nicely done. Cut it into cubes roughly the same size. Hmm. The, the, the skin is definitely not flavorful that you want, so you want to make sure you get rid of the skin. You just I want to shape it to where it's going to be in the same kind of relative size cube so that it's nice and even for the salad. Yes. yes, 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 yes. Oh, that is so beautiful. All right, so should we put our dressing in there? Please, yeah. Think we need all of that? Should I just well, do it? Well, don't go with all of it until we know. Mm -hmm. We can always add, but we can't take it back out very easily this anyway. This is true. And let's see. Okay. Like I say, we oh, can what always the, You know what? More. There we go. There we go. I just made a decision. Yeah, executive decision. But remember, it's a cut up. So if somebody brings tomatoes, add some tomatoes. It's yeah. not a, like yeah, it's only whatever. one way to do it. I like the mix that we got. Well, and we've got a tomato-based soup, so we're good. In Time that way. for fish. Yes, please. Yeah. All right, there is our uh, ham bone snapper. That's going to go in there, yes. if you would. And then I'm just going to. Fold that in, and I bet you want to add a little hot sauce. I do. I knowing. thought you'd never ask, but the older I get, the more excitement I need. There, there. Since... bottled excitement. Go okay. ahead. Beautiful. We could also put some of that on the table for people who are even more ba boom. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Okay. That's it. That's it's ready to take to the table. All right. All right. Boy. Okay. Everybody dig in. This is my you, favorite everybody. kind of soup. Mm. 
go. How's everybody like the heat in this? The too spicy it's for you? It's right. on the rice. It's good. You can cook for us anytime you like. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> Although he did most of the work. No, he did most of the work. <laughs> I have a question, everybody. How many people at this table are cocks? Oh. Wow. <laughs> Just one, the littlest. Yes, Audrey. Nice. Is anybody here a freshwater conch? Wait. We are. What is that? OK, so when you're born here in the Keys, you're automatically a conch, a saltwater conch. But if you live here for a certain period of time, you're considered a freshwater conch. And how many years is required? I believe it's seven. So I'm working on my citizenship. <laughs> of the Conch Republic. Republic. Of the Conch Republic. Yes. I want to propose a toast to the whole table, to our delightful neighbors here, not mine, but yours, yes. uh, for coming, for bringing fruit to cut up. And I want to know, is there a conch toast? Drink up. <laughs> cheers. 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 Cheers, girls. That's it. Yay, good, good, good. You did it. You, you did, did it. Well. Cheers. Uh, that's cheers. For recipes and videos, go to our website, sarahmolton.com. Sarah's Weeknight Meals is made possible by SunSweet and... Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was starting when I was a child, with my grandmother doing fresh pasta, and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Sarah's Weeknight Meals.